Senator Lyons. Senator Seward. Thank you, Mr President. I rise tonight to speak about the failure of this government and the failure of the Prime Minister, the self-proclaimed Prime Minister for Aboriginal Affairs and their failure to uh, properly address the disadvantage in Aboriginal communities. The government has ripped over half a billion dollars in funding out of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander programs. They have failed to include justice targets in the Closing the Gap strategy and stand silently by over the proposed closures in remote, of remote communities in my home state of Western Australia. And then, of course, we'd seen the Indigenous Advancement Strategy becoming and starting, in fact, from a complete mess and continuing that way. Been extremely concerned about the process of the Indigenous Advancement Strategy from, the, from ever since it was announced um, and have asked, in fact, many questions and estimates to try and find out how this process would operate, how it was put in place, who was consulted and how the granting process was continuing. The announcement earlier this week that the government needed to extend the period for funding applications for the IAS was inevitable, and it was an inevitable outcome of the flawed process. Community organisations and service providers have been deeply concerned by this new funding application process and the, uh, as it was implemented under the advancement strategy. The combination of cutting so many programs, the tight timeframes and application pro process have put a lot of pressure on organisations, as has been shown by the large number of applications, the issues of the quality of the applications and the fact that many other organisations have not even applied. Even more concerning is the unwillingness of some organisations to speak out about the government for fears that their funding would, not be, effect, would be affected and they would not get their funding um, uh, application through the process. Given the flaws in this process we have seen, it is inevitable that the government would be faced with the choice of either extending the funding application process or seeing vital services close um, their doors. While this extension from the government is important, it is only a last-minute reprieve and in, in, for a short time um, in that organisations have no certainty of what happens after that. Organisations and programs that are relying on this process play an essential role in communities and in people's lives. They deserve to be treated with more respect than this process has shown them. They have staffing and resource allocations um, that are extremely important where decisions have to be made, and these all are under a cloud of uncertainty, a, a cloud of uncertainty that this government has created. The government needs to rethink this process urgently and, developing a pro and develop a process that delivers vital community-driven services and supports. Nobody disputes the importance of ensuring funding is linked to outcomes that genuinely help Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. But this process has failed. There was not an assessment of the effectiveness of the previous programs or what worked or didn't work. It was simply an e efficiency cut put across the board. The Prime Minister needs reminding about how important it is that we get this right. He needs to look no further than the Productivity uh, Commission's report overcoming Indigenous disadvantage, where it shows that the rate of self-harm, chronic disease, alcohol abuse and disability are all significant areas that are where the gap has not been closed. Cutting funding for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander programs will only compound these problems. There must, be an, there must be an end to the policies that come from the top down and in which Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities have um, not had a say in developing. And this has been no more clearly illustrated just, recent, just today by Dr Howard Bath, the child commissioner um, in the Northern Territory, where he has been talking about school attendance and the need for community ownership and community-driven programs. If we are going to make significant progress in closing the gap, we need to invest not cut programs as the government has done um, with this year's budget. And, and I take, for example, the cuts to legal aid, the cuts to the family violence program, the cuts to the language program, all programs that, in fact, the Social Justice Commissioner, Mr Mick Gooder, has highlighted in, in his social, in his, uh, social justice uh, report um, that has, in fact, just been tabled today. He um, points out many of the problems that uh, are faced by the, the government's budget and the problems with the Indigenous advance, uh, advancement strategy. And I'll leave the last words in, in this speech to, in fact, quoting the Social Justice Commissioner, who has articulated in his just-released report his concerns over the budget and the lack of community engagement. He says, 
Overall, this up upheaval and lack of clarity is deeply worrying and is causing widespread uncertainty and stress, particularly amongst our communities. I couldn't put it better than that. Thank you, Senator Seward.